my family gathers for a birthday, we retell the stories of how we arrived in this world. So I was born in March, and my dad was at work, and my mom was home with a girlfriend, and the labor wasn't progressing, so they decided to put on their coats and boots. This is Canadian March, not Baltimore. You know, you can run out without a coat. No, and they put on her heavy wooden coat, woolen coat, and she walked around and around the block, around and around, trying to keep the labor going. Frank was a twin, and that was before ultrasounds were invented, and so his mom didn't know she was carrying twins. But the family story is that they went to the department store to buy his beautiful sister Vera and found Frank in the bargain basement for one penny and came home with two days. <laughs> I was present at my granddaughter Megan's birth. She came three months early. Just before they began the cesarean, they warned us that they would do everything they possibly could to help that baby live. But she was so small, they had no idea if the IVs would fit in her veins or if the breathing tube would fit down her throat. And as things went from bad to worse, I found myself pushed out of the operating room and into the hall where I stood alone and afraid. And I I prayed. I prayed for the life of my daughter, and I prayed for that life of the baby that I didn't even know yet. Minutes passed by. You know, when they deliver a baby on the TV, it feels like it takes, what, 30 seconds? But when you're waiting alone in the hall, the minutes go by so slowly. Finally, the door swung open and a little bassinet was wheeled down to the NICU and I was motioned to follow it. Now, my granddaughter was 11 inches long. That's the size of a Barbie doll. She weighed the same amount as a guinea pig. And her scrawny arms and legs were flailing about and she was crying. Her cry sounded like the small kitten mewing, but to me, the noise was like a hymn to my ears. Even though she was so small and so underdeveloped, even though she would cling to life barely for the next three weeks, at that moment, my fear fled and my heart was full of joy. Our Megan Grace had begun her journey in life and I wanted to sing like a choir of angels. Every birth elicits a mixture of emotions, fear and joy being the top two. I doubt if Mary and Joseph would have chosen on their own at that point in Mary's pregnancy to leave the support of Mary's family in Nazareth and travel the 80 miles on foot to Bethlehem to register for taxation. <clears throat> now Joseph's family home was in Bethlehem, but it was full of extended family who had also returned to be registered. That makes the guest room really cramped. That room, that word that we translate as in does not mean hotel, it means guest room. When the time came for Mary to deliver, there was no empty space in the house, and so she and Joseph went to the stable to deliver their firstborn. Now every parent is filled with trepidation under the best of circumstances, so I imagine that the fear that night was palpable in the air under these strenuous conditions. You know, that pregnancy had begun with a taste of fear, or at least angels trying to dispel and alleviate the fear. Fear not, says Gabriel, when he came to Mary to tell her of God's plans. Fear not, says the angel in Joseph's dream, 
as he took on Mary and the unborn baby. And now, against a backdrop of Roman power and oppression, they struggle to bring this new life into the world. But can you imagine their joy when they look into the eyes of their newborn baby? And never mind the silent night, holy night stuff. I bet they took great delight at that first lusty, lung-filling cry. That's how it is for new parents. Hope and fear bundled together in your heart. Each of us is indelibly marked by everyday hardship. We, we too carry hope and fear in our hearts. Some of us struggle with health issues, illnesses that threaten our lives or the lives of our loved ones. For others, it could be a faltering relationship, complicating their whole day. Or worry over the safety of a loved one who is serving abroad can deplete your spirits. So can caring for a disabled child or an aging elder. It is often amid the weakness and vulnerability that God's intentions become <coughs> clear. Fear not, says the angel to the shepherds. Now the shepherds were at the bottom of the status of the society, and night shift shepherds were the lowest of the low. They had reason to be taught, terrified of a sudden appearance of a stranger in their midst. And yet this angel says, fear not, I bring you good news. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, the Messiah who is our Lord. Now God's messenger didn't go to the king. He didn't go to the royal courtiers. He did not go to the high priests or even the wealthy merchants. The angels went to humble shepherds with the news of salvation through God's anointed one who would be our Lord. The shepherds took heart and left immediately. <clears throat> With haste, says the scripture, to find the sign of hope. And they found baby Jesus wrapped in swaddling clothes, the same kind of wrappings that their own children would be wrapped in, but placed in a manger instead of in a bed. They not only recognize the vulnerability of the situation of the whole newborn and the holy family, but also God's promise of hope. And then they were filled with glory and they praised God and they went and told the good news everywhere. <clears throat> and everyone who heard it was amazed. If I get through the water. <coughs> if God can work through young parents and lowly shepherds, then God can work through us through the history of our lives, through the flesh of our bodies. God is not a supernatural rescuer. Jesus is God's loving presence made visible. He is flesh and bones, teacher and healer and savior, Messiah, Lord, friend to sinners. Jesus is God's sign of hope. Author Derek Mall points out that wishing and hoping are two different things. Wishers dream their wishing wish no. Wishers dream their wishing dreams and they watch life go by. They play the odds. Wishers believe in luck, but they don't possess any faith. They look for solid things at the end of trumped up rainbows. They dream pipe dreams. 
and they're usually disappointed. People with hope, however, faithful people who know the goodness of God's grace, don't need to gamble or compromise their reason. They know that Jesus loves them. And like Marian will sing shortly, God's presence provides a thrill of hope and their <coughs> weary souls rejoice. Hope has a plan. Hope is providential assurance based on the confidence that God's intention for our future intersects with our faithful response in grateful obedience to God's plan. Let me say that again. Hope is providential assurance based on the confidence that God's intention for our future intersects with our faithful response of, in obedience to God's plan. We here hope that the homeless in Baltimore are going to be a bit more warm and feel a bit more cared for because we understand that by giving them the hats and scarves that will be delivered tomorrow, we are active participants in God's plan. We can hope that more children in our region will find help and healing through the Board of Child Care because we have taken steps through our generosity to be part of God's plan. We can hope that more people will discover God's love through the work of Delmont, this church. During that first Christmas day, Jesus' birthday, ultimate power poured itself into our powerless forms so that we would know that we were loved and could live in hope. What was imperishable became perishable and faced death, as we all do, so that we would know how to love like God loves. This bare bones birth story is for us. Love came down for us so that when our hearts are that strange bundle of hope and fear, hope will win out. We gather together tonight so that God might continue to enter our lives through the word proclaimed in song, in scripture, in the sermon, and in our prayers. Do not be afraid, said the angel. I bring you good news of great joy that is for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This baby, wrapped and lying in a manger, will be your sign of hope. Amen. <laughs>